Hey everybody, Mark Edward Lewis here from Cinemasound.com, and this is a tutorial about doing footsteps in the Cinemasound Foley Library. We're in Logic Pro, which is a very happy MIDI-capable digital audio workstation, and we've got a little clip here from an action sequence that we shot a long time ago. Uh, here with Rivka Ravenwood. Just going to play it for you. We've got the natural sound, her dialogue, some music, some ambiences, but that's it. No foley. Oh, sound effects. No foley, really. So check it out. Here's how it goes. Steps. So here in the Cinema Sound Foley Library, I've got, you know, on layer A, I've got th the cement, rubber sole, dress shoes, medium, and loud. And then the steel plate, dress shoes, medium. And I'm going to use the steel plate for where he's walking across that grill. And then over here, cement, barefoot, loud. I know you're like, well, he's never barefoot. Why would you use that? Well, one of the great things about this library is that you can do blending in between them and it creates some awesome, uh, awesome layering. Uh, so, uh, bu, 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 bu. Here we go. So we'll just take a look at this for a second. Click, 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 click. That's about all there is of it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to turn. Let's just make sure I've got the MIDI. Yeah, I do. I have it on controller four. So I'm going to turn the layer all the way over to the left so that we can hear. Kind of what's here. And I'm on the full settings. If I wanted to, I could go to the individual settings by hitting the B0 there and going heel toe and controlling it a little bit better with slides and pickups and all that. But I don't think I need to. So we're just going to go to the B flat. We got all the full steps in here and the slides, which we probably won't use. Cool. Now let's see here. I want to show you something cool here over here on the console. Because these are all stereo foley, um, you know, I, I'm not really a fan of stereo foley because that always ends up in the center channel, but we couldn't exactly release a library that was mono. That'd be weird. So what I've done here on the console is I've turned on the stereo modeler and turned the width to zero, which effectively makes it mono. I've also stored it as a preset so that I always have it here. Here's mono channel and I just load it up and it immediately makes any of the layers on this that I want to be uh, mono, which is super, super cool. So let's check this out. We're going to just play some of these through and do a little recording. Free one. And that's about it. And we don't have to be super perfect here. I'm going to close this so we can see this is the region we just created. I'm going to double click on it and there it is. And you've already figured out that I've added reverb here. This is uh, just going over to our standard large format reverb. Okay, so let's see how we did here. Generally, when I try to perform these, I know I'm already going to be a couple of frames late just because of how you know I work. So I'm going to take this object and drag it a couple of frames back. Now let's check out how we did. Here's all the notes. All right, well, you know, we did okay. There's a, What's great about this is that because it's MIDI, we can change anything we want. So this first one is early and it's kind of, you know, off camera. So we'll just drag it over a little bit here. Might be a little early now. And we would also don't like that we want to have it have a heel toe. That might be nice. And this one seemed a little bit late. The second one here. Yeah, it's a little late, so we'll drag both of these forward a couple of frames. And now this one's early, it seems. And this one's weird. So we'll just do that. Nice. All right, so cool. So we want what we really like is that kind of that uh, that metal ding that's going on there, which is super cool. We love it. So what I want to do is uh, open up Contact again here and the library. I want to see if I can get this to go a little lower. In fact, let's just I'm going to pull this off the screen here. Let's just take this whole thing and uh, loop cycle just so it keeps looping for us here. 
And now we're going to turn off the music. Yes, we'll go back. Super dope. So here we are back. And one of the things that's great about the Cinema Sound Foley Library is that each one of these individual notes, you can turn different pitches. Any of these things that are here, you can change the sound on um, because uh, each one of these uh, only works with one of these notes, which is great. So let's just try one of these here. And you can see as I do different velocities, the cutoff, this right here, automatically goes up and down gets brighter and just like a footstep would if you were moving closer or not all right so we're going to do this and i'm going to change the pitch of it just a little bit only issue is these haven't been changed but that one has but no problem i can go apply to all and now they've all been switched which is super great let's see how that plays Way cool. We love it. Now, one of the things I want to do also is sort of contour the attack so it's not so, so I don't have such a click in it. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to the console. Now, I could use a compressor or something, but one of the things that this console has in there, which is super cool, is the transient designer. And here we have the attack. How much attack in the sound do you want and how much sustain in the sound do you want? And we'll want to make it smooth just because that's cool. Check this out. We hit play and bring the attack down. Bring it up. And then we have the same with the sustain. Check out a bring, take down the sustain. Now it's just kind of the click and then bring up the sustain. Makes some pretty cool sounds. So we'll do a little bit of a balance. We'll add a little sustain and we'll take the attack kind of way down. Let's see how we do here. And now let's see, I think that's pretty cool now. Uh, I love that sound. And again, this is after the monoing that we did, all here in the console, nice and built in. Now you can see that there are other sounds over here. This is the cement barefoot loud that's happening. And why are we triggering that? Well, check this out. So I'm gonna bring over the layer uh, mixer and just listen to the cement barefoot. That's it's a lot of low frequency hump that's happening there. So if I use a little bit of the barefoot and then the rest of the layer A, I can get some nice thump. Here's without. And then. Now I've got some nice low frequencies. And since I don't have the transient designer over here on layer two, it can be free to just have a nice low frequency thump in there. Let's see how that flows. Pretty cool. I love that. All right, so now that we have this part of the scene done, let's move to the next. Now, this one's pretty easy because for most of this shot, he's not even visible. Check it out. Here's some pre-walk, and we see a step there, and then he's sort of out. So this should be pretty easy. Now, I've got these other sounds loaded here, and all I have to do is trigger them with a key switch from the keyboard, and they'll instantly jump I'll tell you what i'm talking about here bang now i'm just using keys on the keyboard and they can jump between all of them so but you know since i'm going to be making a key switch we always want to make sure that we start the very first thing we did with a key switch otherwise you know bad things happen you'll end up on the wrong one so we're going to go back here we're just going to hit the d7 here just start it so that we know that the key switch for the steel plate is always going to be the right one then when we get to this we're gonna jump down and then try our different key switches before this scene here. So let's see which one we like. Now I still have this cement barefoot thing going on. Actually, it's there for you, yay. Um, so we wanna turn that off. Now I happen to have it on a MIDI controller here. So we wanna do some the same kind of thing. We wanna come back here where we added that initial key switch. We wanna put it just here, hit record, just a little bit of it and then hit play. There it is. And once we're out of it, we'll get to this next scene. 
And then we'll turn it all the way off like that while we record. And then it comes back on its own. All right, so let's check out what it sounds like on the C0 sound, the uh, cement rubber dress, rubber sole dress shoes medium, which is okay. Let's see, loud. A little bit faster heel toe. And I think that'll work for us. So we'll go in here. I'm going to hit C sharp. And now we're on the cement rubber sole dress shoes uh, loud. And then from here, we'll try to time his steps. Now remember, this isn't going to be the final sound. This is just us getting the data in. That'll do. Pretty close since most of that's off screen. And there's the thing I just recorded over here. Let's see if we can find another bit where he walks by, which should be right about here. We'll keep the same sound. Um, let's see, it's hard to see. Plunk, there he does one there. Okay, and that should do for him, uh, for that scene. And then when she gets hit, it's not on screen. And then he goes, there's a, so there's a right step, a left, a right, a left. Now for these, because he's walking backwards, the regular full footsteps aren't going to work because they're, they're all pre-programmed to be heel, toe, heel, toe. He's actually stepping backwards, so it's toe, heel, toe, heel. So this recording isn't going to work when we have to use the manual B0 uh, footsteps. And I'll bring this back here so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're right now we're on the B flat. You can see the keys down here are switching colors for us uh, to go from the full footsteps to heel, 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 toe, 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 slide, 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 pick up, pick up, pick up. So actually, we have to go toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, the other way as he's backing up. And that also lead, lets us know that we need to start a B flat because we're having a key change, a key switch change for B and B flat between the layers here as well. So we'll go back to the top just to make sure that as we switch these, we don't also end up on the wrong uh, key layer. There's our B flat. <laughs> so we're in the right place. Here's our B natural. Now we're in the right key layer. And then it'll be left, right, toe, heel, toe, heel. Let's see how we do here. Heel, toe, heel, toe. At first, after he hits her, he'll toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, and then Toe heel, toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. Okay, let's try it. And somewhere in there we need to add a little slide. This is one of those. Oh, there's one more after that. Okay, here we go. Cool. That should do. And now we'll just go into the editor here. We'll pull, pull all these together, merge, double click, and see what we have here. This is again the piano roll editor. This is fine. And as always, we're I'm always a little bit late. Oops, I didn't want that. I'm always a little bit late in my performances, so I learned that everything goes over a couple of frames just to make up for my latency human latency. Now this was definitely late. In fact, this one is as well. In fact, I think both of these are. And both of these are here too. Cool. And let's double check this. Well, there's another step here in the corner that I'm missing. And this one's a little bit late. So we'll just take this, we'll drag it over somewhere. It should show us this step right about there. We'll change the pitches of it so it doesn't sound like a machine gun. There we go. And it's actually a little bit, that heel toe there is a little bit faster. There we go. All right. Cool. Just for 
laughs and giggles. There we are. So now we're going to merge all of these together. This is Colton's footsteps in total. All of these come together. And the reason we do that is that way all the key switches and everything else get sent at the same, you know, they're, they're not broken up into strange objects that might not uh, chase if you're in the middle of them, in the middle of the object. Now, obviously, this sound is a little funky. It's a little clunky. And we like it when it was over here. It sounded pretty great. And, and that's great. But over here, it's just a little too clunky for us. It's just a little clunky here for us. So what we'll want is a high pass filter and the high pass filter cuts out low frequencies and leaves the high frequencies, which is opposite of the default, which is a low pass, which cuts out the highs. There's also a band pass, which we use in clothing quite a bit, which cuts out everything but the mids. And I've assigned it to this MIDI controller here so that as you can see, I have an independent control and play. There's the highs and then the lows being restored. So when we're back here in this place, we're in a pretty good space. I'll bring this over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to establish that the that this will be all the way off in the beginning. A little MIDI information there. Now it's all the way off. Now our original doesn't get cut off at all. We're going to jump forward to the end here and cut off the low frequencies. It's sort of like having a little EQ built in, which is super cool. And we'll just also re-trigger this so it's on the right sound. It's a little clunky. So here we go. Cool. We'll bring it down. Awesome. We love it. Now the rest of this would be mixing and some simple distance to camera mixing, which you would be doing on Foley anyway. We'll just instantiate an EQ here on this channel. We've got a nice high frequency shelf, which is all that really needs to happen now. Nice, and we'll see that that plays back. Yep, certainly does. Awesome. So we will save. And then the rest of it's just volume, which we'll deal with when we get everything else in place. Even if you're stuck.